how's your mental health going, Jeff? Good. I had a, this is a, a much lighter than normal check-in. Like yesterday, a friend of mine and I, we had been planning this for like weeks, decided to just like take the afternoon and go record shopping. Mm-hmm. And, um, <laughs> and I realized uh, he actually described this, but it, it, it hit so perfectly. All of the, all of the knowledge I have about music, starting from when I obsessed over reading the credits on MTV in like 1983 uh, to the present day, all of that information I've saved and collected, sometimes even without meaning to, man, when I get to a record store, I feel like, oh, I am expert in something. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. And, and so that was kind of fun. It was, and it was really, it was really fun to just, I haven't really like intentionally gone record shopping, certainly with a friend in a long time. It can be awkward. Like, are you ready? No, I'd like some more time, but no hurry. You know, like you just don't know what a person's timing is or like their rituals when they go into the record store. Like it takes me like 15 minutes to go through the new used records that have come in, you know, sometimes 20 minutes. Uh, I'm very slow. Anyhow, but it was a lovely time. But the thing that the reason this is a mental health check in is, you know, I struggle with having too much stuff. Mm -hmm. And one of the categories of stuff is, you know, records and CDs and cassette tapes and And I had been sitting on this box of seven inches since the early 90s. It's awesome. It's an awesome box of seven inches. But I'd never, not then and not now, do I play seven inches, right? Um, And so I realized, like, yeah, these are fun to look at, but why don't I just put them back into the river here, you know? And so I brought them in, and they don't usually, nobody buys 45s anymore. I mean, barely seven inches, whatever you want to call them. But I brought them in. And the guy was like, you know, he's trying to set the expectations low. He's like, you know, we don't really buy. I mean, I can take a look, man. And I got $300 store credit out of these things. And so, and 20% off whatever I wanted to buy. And so I got to do the most massive record shopping I've ever done. And I bought like $350 worth of records for $10. And it felt so good to get rid of something and then just so directly you know, recycle it into something new and fresh. I wasn't just trying to give up space. This was more about giving up sort of psychic space. Like this had just been something I knew I should deal with for a long time. And it was just felt so good to buy so many records and not come home uh, exhausted with shame. Like, oh, why did I spend so much money? Uh, so it was cool. I've never, I've never once spent that much money record shopping and it was just lovely. Anyway, so that's my mental health check and it gave me a big boost and I've spent the, you know, yesterday and today just listening to the records and that's awesome. What, a, what about you? Um, yeah, no, I mean, mine is pretty good. Like I said, I was, I was able to be with uh, some friends, which was really nice. Like that always improves my mental health when I'm around people that I care about. I am. Um, I went to dinner with um, a, a person that I know mostly online. Um, uh, apparently we had met before, but I, unfortunately didn't remember. And we went out to dinner on Friday and I was anticipating that it was going to be like a dinner where, cause he just started a new job at Amazon and was in town for that. And so I figured I was like, Oh, well it'll be some of his colleagues. And then I'll be kind of be like the fifth wheel. And it wasn't, it was actually two people that he'd worked with at previous jobs who just happened to work at it were live in Seattle now, but the, you know, the other three of us didn't know each other. Um, and so, um, like, it was, it was kind of a nice, almost like dinner party sort of thing where, you know, we were all, it was, you know, you know, four people kind of, you know, three people getting to know each other. We had a mutual friend, but it was a really nice, like he he picked a really good group of people to kind of meet up and nobody felt like they were, you know, like the fifth wheel and nobody felt like, you know, un, un, unincluded. And, and that was really nice. And that had me thinking, I was like, oh, that's a really nice way of maybe doing kind of group, you know, intros of things. Um, yeah. But, uh, but, but, but being around people helps my mental health a lot. And it's one of those things where I can have my introverted moments, but it's very, that that's times when it's like, okay, it's actually really important for me now to be around people. And, and it just kind of reminds me like, that's what the hardest part of the last, you know, two plus years have been, has been like not being around people because yeah. that, that really does impact me. I, you know, and, and, and it, it's one of those things where you're, at least for me, I, I'm like, oh, I don't need this. But I do. And it's one of those things where, because I've, I've had times in my life where, I mean, actually, this freaked me out. It's the first time I ever went on Clonopin or anything like that was I was having like major agoraphobia, which I'd never had before. 
And, you know, you almost had to do kind of like exposure therapy to kind of like get past it and, and whatnot. But it was almost like, okay, I really do need to be around people. Um, even though I'm, I'm perfectly happy by myself sometimes, like it's really important for me to be around people. And so yeah. it's been nice, you know, the last, the last few days, you know, being around people who are either new or that I haven't seen in a while. And like that does a lot for my mental health. It's amazing because you're describing such a simple thing, but it's so incredible that we've just been through a long period of time where it was completely impossible. Totally. Totally. I'm not, I'm not I just continue to be astonished by that. No, I know. And and I think that that is one of those things that we just we had to do it. And, and it's going to have so many long lasting repercussions for so many people for kids, especially, you know, for young adults, but even for adults, right? I think even for people who feel like, well, we're, we're, we're stronger, and we've gone through this stuff. It's like, no, like, our lives have had like, real disruption. And and there are real long term consequences to that. Yeah. And, and it's really nice when you're reconnected with people again, but there's still, you know, kind of this, this fear in people's, you know, some people have like, where like, you know, am, am I going to get sick? Like, what are the risks? And I'm now at the point, and I can say this like fundamentally for me, the, the, um, it, it like the, the downsides of not being able to be like, kind of live my life in a more normal way and, and be around people are much worse than like what could happen if I got like long COVID mm. if 